Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics with your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. We're gonna talk about five things today, macro, blur, artifact, ACK, and then some notable sales. Starting quickly with the macro overview, pretty slow day yesterday. It was the slowest day, essentially the slowest day that we've had in seven weeks. The large cap index was down a small bit, largely because Coda, which was up 20% over the weekend, gave back about 10% of its floor price yesterday. Mid caps were up a touch. You can't really see it in this chart, but Rec Guide, Quirkies, and, and Compi Pandas were really strong. Nice to see Compi Pandas hit an all time high yesterday. So, even in a slow market, nice to see some collections hitting all time highs. Art blocks in the art market, pretty, pretty quiet. Uh, the Harvest, the most recent curated drop, did 24.5 ETH of volume. That led the charts. Uh, only five collections did more than 10 ETH of volume. I also highlighted here Libra by Cooper Jamison which was an Art Blocks Present project that dropped yesterday, only did five beat the volume on 12 trades. Story number two, Blur gets around the OpenSea block. Now this was broken yesterday by an account called Panda Jackson 42 uh, The news actually kind of quietly hit a couple days ago, but attention only hit it over the past 24 hours. To provide a bit of background on the story, a few months ago, OpenSea said that they were only gonna enforce royalties on new projects that block all exchanges that don't enforce royalties. Now, Blur said, no problem. We're going to enforce royalties on new projects too. You don't need to block us. And OpenSea said, not so fast. Uh, we're only going to allow exchanges that enforce royalties on all projects. And as we know, Blur does not enforce royalties on projects that launched a few months ago, immutable projects, those they only enforce up to half of 1% royalty on. So OpenSea insisted that they be blocked as well. At some level, they were right. If you look at where the royalties are actually being paid, this chart here, you can see OpenSea is the blue line here. You can see that about 90% of all royalties paid per day are from trades that happen on OpenSea. And what this chart looks at is the average royalty paid per day per trade. So the average royalty right now paid on, on OpenSea is around 4.8%, a little bit lower than it has been, but still well above where Blur looks rare X2Y2R. You no, know, you can see Blur is around 0.6% uh, for their average royalty per trade. Now, how did Blur get around this block? To understand it, you have to go back to May 2022 when OpenSea decided that they were going to build their entire, their entire marketplace was going to be built on something that they launched called Seaport. Okay. And Seaport is where sellers list their NFTs or buyers come and buy NFTs with their ETH. Now, what's important to understand about Seaport though is it's entirely open source and it's entirely decentralized. In the blog that OpenSea wrote, they said that they are building on top of Seaport, but it's for all builders, creators, and collectors. So it's not just theirs. This is, they're just a user of it. They said that there's no contract owner, uh, there's no upgradability, and there's no special privileges. So right now, there, there are something like 15 exchanges that use Seaport as their, as their under, underlying infrastructure. So Blur decided that they are simply going to use Seaport, and you can't really block Seaport because that would be blocking OpenSea. So they're simply using Seaport and saying, okay, now you can buy and sell NFTs on Blur, even on these block collections, we're just using that Seaport contract. They are still enforcing royalties on all the projects that on all the projects that are on Seaport. And you can see here that there are a couple projects, like if you look at the screen at Sewer Pass, there's no top bid. The same is true for a kid called Beast. You know, these are the only recent projects that have blocked Blur. So you can see that those are the ones that don't have top bids. That's probably because Blur just simply hasn't built that functionality yet. I do think they will be able to build it. I'm not entirely sure, but I think they will be able to build it, but they haven't built that quite yet. Now, if you look at the past couple of days, you know, where has the volume been in these two sets, Sewer Passes and Kid Called Beast? Those are the two that had blocked Blur. Still, the vast majority of trades are on OpenSea for Sewer Passes, but you do see you know, around 30, 35% of the trades on Blur and a smaller number on X2Y2. A Kid Called Beast, almost entirely on OpenSea, but I think this idea that you can use Blur and the reason people are using Blur, even though they have to pay the full royalty, is a couple of things. One is some people just really like that platform, really like that interface, like the tools. And the second piece is that the, the OpenSea marketplace fee is 2.5%. So you are getting that 2.5% discount because Blur charges zero marketplace fee. So I do imagine you'll see more, people, more, more collectors move over there uh, for a little while. Story number three, Clonex Exodus. Uh, Clonex launched a video today. Here's just a screenshot from the video saying that they were launching Exodus. The basic idea behind it 
is that all clones are embarking, you know, basically the planet's being destroyed and clones are getting on a spaceship, an Exodus mission to go somewhere. The spaceship is actually the, the pods, the space pods and the loop pods. And, and those are, you have to own one of those and put your clone in it to go on these trips. Now, one of the features that they announced, you know, space pods and loop pods have existed for a very long time. These were dropped to, to Clonex holders about 11 months ago, I believe, just as a free airdrop. Uh, the price has basically kind of sat around that 0.3 range, 0.3 to 0.5, not done a whole lot. And what they said, though, in line with the burn theme, is that you can burn your space pods and your loop pods to get an exopod or a lux pod. And what these are is just super nice pods that you can use for your mission. They also are, are where you can display your collectibles and display your, your Clonex NFTs. Um, a whole lot of details about them. You can see in the upper right corner here, this is the Lux pod. They give all sorts of traits to each of the pods, but you can see in the upper right that there's an interior to them, and that's a place where you're kind of meant to display your collectibles over time. Now, how did the price react? I think the, the, project, or the NFTs that are most affected by this are Loot Pod and Space Pod, uh, because those are the ones that you can now burn into something more luxurious and interesting. And you can see here that the prices didn't really do much. You know, loot pods have always been at a discount to space pods. So those have been kind of climbing a little bit. I think with these, they were just sitting around for a while. People weren't really using them that much. So it is interesting that RTF or Artifact is bringing these older NFTs back into the lore and making them have some real utility for their ecosystem. These are, are the new pods that you can burn them into. You know, remember the Lux pod uh, requires 40 burns. So that floor is now 27 ETH. And, and the second tier, which requires two of each. That's at 1.1. Story number four, Alpha Centauri Kid ACK, his color additions project moons. Now, ACK color additions are, are all these NFTs. And, you know, about three months ago, there was an NFT that, that, he, that he minted, that people owned, that eventually could get burned into all these different colors. Uh, so that's the basic idea of the project. Now, what you can see is, you know, the, the floor has kind of gone between two and five ETH. If you look at all the projects or all the different colors put together, it was at about 3.1 two days ago, and it jumped to nearly 7 ETH yesterday. There were moments where it was actually above 10 ETH, but it kind of settled back around that 7 ETH range, but still jumped 2x over the course of just two days. Um, now, what, what happened here? I was looking at who are the people who did the buys. So there were five, five buyers who bought all 10 of the different colors who bought complete full sets. Now, if you look at those top three, there's Barat, there was one which is the 6529 Museum Wallet, and there's Bat Soup Yum. All three of these are part of the 6529 team. So there must have been something where the 6529 team kind of jointly decided that this was something that they wanted to own. ACK said, you know, thank you to all the people who, who bought this. Uh, you know, and he also mentioned Piano Season is in full effect. So that's the next drop coming from ACK. It's this piano idea. There'll be a hundred of them. So exciting to see, but congrats to ACK and holders of this project. Cool to see that this uh, open edition, kind of in line with the current burn mechanism theme, uh, did so well. Last thing to talk about is notable sales. The first is this NFT called The Sign by Anima. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. Sold for 70 ETH. No, I'm not super familiar with this project. It kind of sits at the intersection of music and AI and art. Uh, it's done by some of the top curators at, at Super Rare, who are actually the artists on the project. It has had three sales at 100 ETH or higher in the past for these three NFTs, but still a 70 ETH. That was the biggest sale of the day in the art world. So congrats. Uh, the second I want to talk about is a kid called Beast. They had their reveal a few days ago. And this, I say one of one, but it's actually one of two. There are two Lady Bones traits, but this sold for 13 ETH. This was the highest sale for a kid called Beast project. If you look at the floor, you can see that you know it's kind of gone down a touch, not too uncommon when you're dealing with post-reveal situations. You had a little bit of a bounce back yesterday, but cool to see that 13 ETH sale. And the last one I want to talk about is the Spiral by Photon is Dead. This sold for 21.69 ETH on AOTM. Just a really cool sale. I believe that this was the highest sale for Pho. If you look back kind of into Twitter and look at the hashtag Pho Spiral, this is really cool. There were Tons of derivatives that were being made all over Twitter by all sorts of different artists of this piece. A lot of these are really cool. I think this one on the lower right has the Grant Yoon Kao 
Uh, there's one on the lower left. I think it's titled Verification is in the Eye of the Beholder and just some really cool art. So kind of a cool thing to see. Congrats to the artist on that 21.69 sale. Very, very cool. That's all for me today. I'd love to anything that you think we should be talking about. You know, some people do hit my DMs. I'm Punk9059 on Twitter. Uh, people send me ideas for what they think we should talk about. Feel free to send me what you think is interesting, what I'm missing. Would love to hear it. If you like the video, please like it below, subscribe, comment, tell us what we can do better, what you do, what we do, or what you do like about what we're doing. That's all for today, and we will see you tomorrow.